Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your April 2020 mid-month general reading for Sagittarius. Uh, this is the second Sagittarius mid-month April reading I am posting because the first one evidently uh, was freezing and buffering. I did get some notification from some of you lovely subscribers that when you copied and pasted the link into your web browser and played it that way, that it was just fine. Uh, so what I've done is deleted that Sagittarius mid-month April video uh, from my playlist and I am redoing another one. So for those of you that were able to successfully watch it just by copying and pasting into your browser, this could be an additional message for you or it could be a different message for a different group of Sagittarians out there that need to hear it. So uh, that's what's going on. <laughs> Electronic issues sometimes. So thanks for everyone for joining us here today. I hope everyone is continuing to be safe and well in a world that <laughs> seems to be fluctuating from day to day. So again, this is for <clears throat> Sagittarian, Sagittarius, sun, moon, rising. If your Venus is in Sagittarius, or if you're cross-watching for a Sagittarian. Uh, general readings always resonate a little differently. So watch all of your signed videos if you know them and if you can. And as always, if any of you are interested in taking a deeper look at something or reaching out for a personal uh, reading or information on a personal reading with me, just click on the description link below, click on that little arrow that pulls down information. You'll see my contact details. You can email me directly at Maggie, the number one, McGuire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to work with you. I do readings full time, so I'm pretty diligent at both getting back to you within the same day for information and uh, scheduling can be anywhere from a few days up to a couple of weeks. It just depends on the scheduling. We do all have a lot of time at home these days, so I can probably fit you in sooner rather than later. Okay, let's move right into this reading. The second reading for Sagittarius, April 2020, mid-month. We're looking at the last half of April. Okay, Sagittarius, we begin with the Queen of Coins, another deck sometimes known as Pentacles, Earth Energy, followed by the Empress. We have the Two of Wands, followed by the Eight of Coins, and from the bottom of the deck, overall energy is the King of Wands. So you're standing dead smack in the middle of your own energy. For those of you who need or want to know, I am using for this video, The Legacy of the Divine Tarot by artist Ciro Marchetti. So Sagittarius, you are a fire sign and your overall energy is fire. Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, sun, moon, or rising could be another fellow fire sign uh, that is significant or influential for the last half of April for you. But for many of you, this is you standing in your own dynamic, charismatic, get it done, le good leadership kind of energy. Uh, kings and queens represent individuals who have mastered their suit, meaning that they have, uh, not perfect of course, but it means that you've grown and matured and evolved beyond the energy of the page, the energy of the night, and you've reached a, a place of mastery and balance and harmony with the character traits that are natural to you or inherent to you, which is fire, which is the energy of change, movement, action, power, creation. So in whatever area of your life this is going to resonate in, you are being your own uh, balanced, dynamic, charismatic, get it done kind of self. It looks like this particular reading is probably for most of you about the earth energy area of your life. Um, and perhaps whether you need to make a decision on something that has to do with work or project or whatever you do in the day-to-day -day life that supports your day-to-day -day life. We have the Queen of Coins followed by the Empress. So the Queen of Coins, Coins is governed by the element of Earth. And in the tarot, the Earth energy area of our, of our life represents often, it points to things that give us safety, security, stability in the physical structure of our day-to-day -day life. So often that means coins or pentacles because it's the same sort of thing. 
can point to things like money, finance, property, resource, assets, job, home, long-term stable relationships, because that also brings us security. Whatever makes you feel safe and stable and gives you a sense of continuity in your day-to-day -day life um, or the effort you put into acquiring and maintaining those things. So the Queen of Coins, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Energy, Sun, Moon, or Rising. So this can be, this could be uh, an Earth sign individual who is significant to you in the last half of April. Um, for some of you, this might be you being in a fairly stable place in terms of financial or the material monetary sense. It's showing up as a queen. For those of you for whom this is another person, it's showing up as a queen, but it could be a male as well. So clarifying the queen of coins is the empress, major arcana card. The empress speaks of well, it speaks of many things. It can speak of self-nurturing, beauty, sensuality. It's a card that often represents fertility and abundance and fertility. Um, it's often the green light for beginning anything new, planting the seeds to start something new, because that's what fertility ultimately represents, uh, that the time is right for conception, for sowing a seed. Some of you, it might be a good time to actually literally physically conceive. For others of you, you may be thinking of starting something new or wondering where you, whether you should start something new. Some of you, this queen of coins might be another person that you're contemplating starting something new with, you know, going into business or a project or partnering uh, on something new. The queen of coins and the empress both together are very earthy, sensual combination of things. The Empress is kind of the traditional earth mother of the tarot and the Queen of Coins is as well. The Queen of Coins, if you described her as an actual individual, this would be somebody who is very capable, very resourceful, somebody who's very nurturing. Um, she's good at taking care of herself, the people around her and making it seem effortless, particularly in the physical day-to-day -day structure of her life. She always looks good, the kids look good, the, she cooks well, you know, the, the rose bushes are always trim, trimmed, the lawn is always mowed. She's the first person to show up with a casserole if, you know, you need it or if you're ill or something like that as an actual person. This is somebody who has, you know, mastered the day-to-day -day structure physical structure of life. But together, these are both cards that can also represent a kind of sensuality and self-care. The Empress can sometimes represent doing things for yourself um, that bring you a sense of physical abundance and physical security and sensuality, you know, uh, massages, bubble baths, those kinds of things. Although, of course, <laughs> With the way the world is today, we're kind of limited in what we can go out to do, if not downright restricted. But it looks like, I feel like for some of you, a lot of you, you're considering whether or not to perhaps begin something new or make a decision to start something or start looking for something. Because next to that, we have the Two of Wands with the Eight of Coins. So the Two of Wands is a card about making decisions. There's two locked boxes here. You have a key. Which one do you open? Now, in the preceding card, in the Ace of Wands, it would have been the brand new beginning, the brand new start to something. And here in the Two of Wands, how do you actually, what path do you choose to begin to manifest something or begin to make something happen? It looks like many of you are, at least those of you for whom I'm reading, are considering you may be trying to make a decision between two things. I'm getting a couple of different messages here. For some of you, you may be thinking of going into partnership or starting something new with an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or somebody who's showing up as the queen of coins. Others of you, this decision has something to do with work or project or career or that earth energy area of your life. So some of you, you may be thinking on whether or not to make a decision about work or starting something new or whether you should begin to look for something new because what clarifies that two of wands that decision making is the eight of coins here which is my work card worker b card getting up early staying up late putting in a lot of overtime you're working on building up a solid stable foundation for yourself so it looks like some of you may be making a decision or trying to make a decision about work now when i say work this can cover a lot of things. This could be your actual nine to five job. It could be a business if you own a business. 
Uh, the eight of coins can also, I mean, work can also represent a project that you're working on steadily. You put a lot of work into work. Some of you, I mean, if you're retired or you don't go out and have a conventional job or a business, this could be whatever you do in your the day your day to day life that that takes care of and supports the physical structure of your day-to-day -day life. For example, for some of you, the two of wands and the eight of coins might uh, might be, you know, do I need to rearrange my investments right now? Do, I mean, the stock market has been <laughs> just ridiculously crazy. Maybe you're thinking, should I, should I make some major changes in my portfolio or my investment or where my money is or in my savings or my IRAs or something of that sort? Here's the thing. For those of you for whom this Queen of Coins does not represent another person, it's you, your energy. In addition to the King of Wands, the Queen of Coins represents that, you know, that you're, you have a fair amount of financial and material stability. If it's about your job, it looks like your job is stable. Um, whatever supports your day-to-day -day life looks fairly stable. So why this decision energy? Why are you thinking of making a decision or trying to make a decision? What is this two of wands about? Let's clarify this. Because of the Knight of Swords. So here's somebody bringing in information, news. So that's why you're in a decision-making mode. So, Sagittarius, this can be a few different things. Some of you may still be working. I know some people have been, you know, some people have lost their jobs or are on furlough or working from home. Some of you may have heard something lately that even though you're showing up as stable right now in that day-to-day, -day, you know, whatever, whatever keeps the day-to-day -day structure of your life stable, you may have heard something or are hearing something or are going to be hearing something in the last half of April. Uh, that makes you that puts you that puts you in this energy of the two of wands. Do I need to make a different decision? Do I need to, you know, shuffle my money aside or take my money out of this and put it in this? Um, if it's your actual job, perhaps some of you are considering, you know, am I going to get laid off? Do I need to make some different decisions here? Uh, should I work from home? Should I modify how I'm working from home? Um, it could be that some of you are still working but are afraid that you might lose your job or might get furloughed because of, you know, the whole shelter in place and everything that's going on with, uh, you know, the COVID-19. But I hear... So I'm getting like... So it's like three or four different messages for three or four different groups. Some of you, a partnership. Do I go into business or partner with this other person? Do I need to make decisions or what decisions do I make to secure or maintain the physical stability of my day-to-day -day life? I don't feel like, what I'm not seeing, Sagittarius, is that that earth energy part of your life is in danger right now. I actually see you as being fairly stable in that. You may have a new opportunity to do something new or bring in additional income if that's a concern for you. Um, right now it feels like you're in a, just kind of either a decision making mode or you're thinking about whether or not you should start something new or start looking for a new job or start a new project or something of that sort. But your underlying security feels secure, feels stable. Let's take a look at how this ends up working out for you, whatever the situation is. I mean, you could you could translate these cards into relationships or love and romance, but honestly, I'm not getting one bit of that. It seems to all be focused on, you know, the security and stability of your day-to-day -day life. What's the most likely outcome of this for Sagittarius? Night spring offers too. Some of you might have an offer, something coming in, or you're hearing information or news about a job. Maybe a job offer is coming in and you're trying to decide if you should take it or if you have an offer and you already have a job, whether you should quit and take another job. 
or keep working your job and start up this new project. Justice in the upright. So <clears throat> whatever the specifics and details of this are, Sagittarius, you're going to be just fine, which is kind of what I felt from the beginning. Justice in the upright is the reap what you sow card. Uh, the outcome of something is entirely dependent on the work and effort that you put into it. Honesty, transparency, justice, what is right, the scales being karmically even. Uh, in the upright position, there's a strong implication that it's going to, whatever it is, it's going to work out in your favor. It's going to work out fairly, particularly karmically. In a karmic sense, it's going to be fair. Contracts and negotiations and agreements usually will work out in your favor when justice in the upright comes up. So let's just pull one last card, Sagittarius. Let's see if there is any advice or anything that you need to do during this time. We're only looking at, you know, a two-week period of time, basically. So... Any advice for Sagittarius on how best to navigate through this for the last half of April? Oh, got one that just popped out. The Hanging Man. Huh, I've pulled this card so many times for people in readings uh, lately because of what's going on. So this is, as advice, this is a strong indication that it doesn't look like any specific action needs to be taken right now because you're still gaining perspective on this. You're still gaining knowledge. You're still gaining wisdom. Things are still playing out. You may not know everything yet or have all the information. So this is always a card that speaks of gaining wisdom, information, and perspective, but not acting on something because things are still playing out and you're watching those things still play out and you're gaining new information and perspective and wisdom during that. So it's an indication that it's it's probably, for most of you, not the best time to make a decision on whatever this is. Now, right behind that was the Ace of Coins, which is a new job, moving, relocating, a new project. I mean, this could be moving for some of you, too. And it's right behind it. So for those of you, you know, who want to, need to make a decision on, you know, moving, relocating, a new job, a new project, partnership, something of that sort, it's the time to do it or to actually begin the work on it is probably not very far away but for now for the time being at least for the last half of april you know things are still kind of in motion things are still playing out and i feel like you may not have all the pieces or all the information you need yet so just kind of hang tight for this time but you look your your stability your fundamental stability and security looks good looks steady so Sagittarius, that is your reading for the last half of April, your second reading <laughs> for the last half of April. I hope that uh, it resonated with those of you that it meant me is meant to. And uh, it, again, if you'd like to take a deeper look at anything or you'd like to reach out for a personal reading, click on the description link below, click on that little arrow that pulls down info, and you'll see my contact details there. And you can always directly email me at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'll see you in a couple of weeks for the May 2020 general readings. Until then, I wish you much love, joy, peace, health, and safety. Uh, stay safe, you guys, and I look forward to seeing you back again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.